May the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable to you, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Amen. Well, in our search to find our own place called home, we began on Easter morning considering the empty tomb and the gathering of disciples down at the Sea of Galilee following Christ's resurrection. There on the beach, Jesus introduced them to a whole new idea of home, reminding them that they would never again be alone. Forever, they will be and are filled with the Holy Spirit and are a part of the family of God. The next week, we learned that all are welcome, and when we say all, we mean all. all. Nicely done. We've learned to avoid fear and doubt and to embrace the risen Christ in an open and welcoming presence. Then we consider that everyone has a place at the table. Yeah. You guys are so good. Even our enemies have a place at the table. And Jesus demonstrates to us his extravagant hospitality. And we are invited to focus on unity, not on division. And then last Sunday, we learned that there's always room for one more. Oh, nice. We learned that God continues to seek us, and there is always room for one more believer, one more follower of Jesus Christ, and one more evangelist who shares the good news. Today, we are learning how to become a church that where love abides, where we can reside in love, where we can share Christ's love with the world. I heard a beautiful story this week, thanks to Facebook, that's where I get all my news, not really. Uh, but this week, my friend Reverend Hannah Adair Bonner uh, shared a story. She is uh, one of my clergy friends who serves at the University of Arizona and she helps to run the In Project, a ministry that welcomes asylum seekers. She, uh, that's one of the, the missions that we are uh, specifically focused on for annual conference. Uh, it's in your bulletin, the ministry with asylum seekers. But this In Project helps these guests with whatever it is they need. Once they have uh, been processed through immigration and have been deemed worthy of asylum. They are brought to the Inn Project where they are given food and clothing and water, and a shower, perhaps laundry. And more importantly, they connect these folks with their families and friends in other parts of the country and, and help them to get there with bus tickets or plane fare, uh, any way that they can to help these people find their new home. And last week, Pastor Hannah shared how she had approached a woman, sat down on the ground next to her, near her feet. She took out of her pocket a handful of hair ties, and the woman picked a, a navy one. Now this woman had arrived with both her hair and her shoes tied with pieces of trash bags because at the detention center, the immigration detention, they take away shoelaces and hair ties. And as the woman was taking the piece of trash bag out of her hair and, and put her hair back up in a ponytail with this new navy hairband, almost in synchronized motion, Pastor Hannah slowly began to untie the plastic strips that were holding together the woman's shoes. And then carefully, she laced up the shoes with a soft lavender lace that she had picked earlier from a, a whole jumble of colors that Pastor Hannah had held in her hand. And Pastor Hannah said that she very carefully smoothed out the twists so that they looked perfect. Don't they look perfect there, yeah. right? And as she did this, the guest ate a meal and fed her baby. Pastor Hannah said that her fingers gently wrestled the laces into bows and the woman just lit up with delight. Imagine tying shoes being such a delight. And she said this more than anything else she had ever experienced. It felt like a foot washing. 
And when we abide in love, when we are connected to the source of love, we are able to demonstrate love to others, sometimes in very simple acts of kindness, like tying shoes. So the question becomes then, how do we abide in love? What does it even mean to abide in love? As I mentioned earlier, abide is kind of an old word. We, we generally use the word reside in our conversations today. And reside means having a home, a place to live, a place to belong. And when we make our home with Chris, within Christian community, we invest in belonging in belonging to that certain family, that certain place, that certain set of people, so that we all find our own spiritual home. And as I mentioned before, it doesn't mean that we all agree on things. All good families have healthy disagreements. Can I have an amen? Amen. Right? It only takes each of us, or all that we need to do is agree to be present present with our spiritual family in love. I learned something very profound a couple weeks ago when I was in Lake Tahoe at the Preaching Pastors Conference. The speaker shared with us the importance of diversity. We as people don't think alike, do we? Some of us do, but many of us don't. And when we all do think alike, we, we tend to conform. It feels nice to hang out with people who think the same, right? And when we teach our children the lessons of our faith, we put them through a process of confirmation, right? That's confirming their beliefs with the churches, with the parents, or with the community. Confirmation. And there's a place for confirmation for agreeing on things. But transformation happens when we have diverse beliefs, when we don't all think alike, and when we dare to share a point of view respectfully and with love. And it is in this tension of differences that real transformation happens. So often when we disagree, we, we think that if we don't get our own way and if, if ours isn't the predominant uh, uh, answer or, or result, that we've got to pack up our marbles and, and go elsewhere. But the fun happens, the transformation happens when we stay and in love engage with other people. How do we make sure that we have the groundwork ready for that type of transforming work. Because that's dangerous work, right? Being able to respectfully disagree with other people, but we must be grounded in Jesus Christ, in his love, to be able even to dare to be open and transparent enough with one another to bring about real transformation which will allow us to reside firmly in our spiritual home. Our scripture today gives us a roadmap for residing in love, for being connected to the source of love, and using that source to empower us to do great and powerful things for Jesus Christ. On the night that, that Jesus was betrayed, he and 11 of his disciples left the upper room and they traveled to the Garden of Gethsemane. And along the way, they passed a vineyard. And it is here that Jesus shares his final lesson. And the scripture tells us that, that Jesus shared with the disciples that he is the true vine. God is the vine grower. God removes every branch that does not bear fruit, scripture says, so that, uh, and those that do bear fruit, he prunes to make more fruit. To fully understand the lesson, we need to learn a little bit about grape vines. Probably you wine drinkers know everything you need to know about grapes <laughs> and vines, but I'm gonna share a little bit more for the rest of us. So when I think of grape vines, I think of the small branches that are connected to the trellis. These are grapevines that in my language, that's what I imagine. But in fact, 
The vine is the trunk, okay? It can be 36 to 42 inches high. It's the, the part that comes out of the ground. It's like a, almost like a small tree. It is from this vine that the branches stretch out on either side, usually supported by a trellis. And it's the vine dresser who is either the owner or the person hired to tend the vineyard. His role is simply to produce as much grape as, as the most grapes possible. And a healthy, properly tended vineyard produces more fruit. And who is it that is our vine dresser? God, exactly. God is the vine dresser. So the branches, those that come off the vine, are propped up with sticks or tied to a trellis. And without the vine dresser, they would be growing along the ground. Uh, the fruit would be rotten in the mud, perhaps getting trampled on. So Jesus says in this scripture, I am the vine, you are the branches. Those who abide in me and I in them bear much fruit, because apart from me, you can do nothing. So you and I, sisters and brothers, we are the branches. We are connected to the vine, we are connected to Jesus, and through our connection, we learn and grow. We produce fruit, right? We demonstrate our Christian faith through our service to our community, our donations to ministry, to the work that we do sharing God's love and sharing our faith with the world. Now the grapes on the vine, they're the fruit, we know that. Fruit symbolizes the best result or the, the sweetest prize. Fruit represents our good works, a thought, attitude, or action that God values because it glorifies him. Love, for example, is a fruit. So how do we get this sweetest prize? How do we stop seeking the wrong places and to find our way to our proper home? Well, the key is simple. The key is to be connected to the vine, to be connected to Jesus, using the source that is Christ to nourish us, just as the branches on the grapevine do. They are connected, intimately entwined with the source of life. But just like these grapevines, we must prepare ourselves for the treatment of the vine dresser. When we aren't maybe doing our best, perhaps we've stepped away from our faith or denied God in some way. I know that's not any of you, but I'm sure a few of us have been disciplined by God. Sometimes it's painful. Sometimes God has to get our attention. God disciplines us to lift us away from our destructive and unfruitful pursuits. Does anyone in this room have any idea what I'm talking about? I, I know you do. I could go on all day, but I won't. Just know I'm with you. And through the pain of God's discipline, we must remember that God is the source. He disciplines all believers, and it is a demonstration of his great love for us. God only wants the best for us. And, and if we're on a path to destruction like any loving parent, he will do his best to intervene and bring us back to get our attention and, and to turn our path around. God works to keep us connected to the vine, connected to the source of love and life. Hebrews 12, 11 says, No chastening seems to be joyful for the present, but painful nevertheless, because afterward it yields the peaceable fruit of righteousness. And then Jesus says, Whoever does not abide in me is thrown away like a branch and withers. Such branches are gathered and thrown into the fire and burned. To avoid that discipline, we must learn to abide, learn to stay close to Christ, following his teachings, and being then the hands and feet of Christ in our community and in the world beyond. This lesson reminds us that 
Jesus is committed to us, right? And producing fruit in our lives. We become partners together, Jesus and us, abiding with one another and gaining the strength and desire to transform lives. And when we surrender to Jesus Christ, when we accept our role as branches connected to the vine, sisters and brothers, there's nothing we can't do. But we must stay connected. And being connected to the vine means that we worship together. We are part of a smaller group sometimes of, of believers where we hold one another accountable to our faith. We read and study scripture by ourselves or in our Sunday school classes. We serve our local charities and support the ministries of the church. Being connected means putting Christ first in our lives, not leaving him for whatever you might have left over at the end of your week. It means spending time in prayer and meditation, seeking God and sharing our concerns and listening for God's response. It means tying the shoelace of a South American woman, offering a cool drink of water or arranging for a bus ticket for a family who is eager to go home. Abiding in Christ can be dangerous, and it will require us to be bold, to step forward and say yes to things that you might never have thought you'd ever do in a million years. And when we abide in Christ, we depend on him to direct and guide us. When we are abiding, we are loved. And when we are loved, we can love others. That is Christ's message. As we seek a place called home, God calls us to abide in Christ, and in doing so, our joy will be 